Hi everyone, this is a, a presentation um, basically outlining how to prepare a roof for your typical site slates. Here you have a wall plate going into position, so it's a bird's eye view from above, plan view in other words as you can see here. There's the rafters flying in place. You see your fascia backing coming in here now. That's been knelt on and on top of that is a tilting board to prevent the, fe the felt creating a well at the, on, on, um, underneath the slates. Here's your felt rolled out, usually 50 mil overhanging the fascia, 50 or, or 75 mil overhanging the edge here. Um, uh, so next, uh, basically the illustration here shows you um, the approach to get the slates in, um, to get the slate lats in the correct position. So you take an actual slate. In this case, we're using a standard typical slate, 600 long by 300 wide, and um, once you hold the slate and have it overhanging. Um, 60 mil or so, um, you know, past the fascia back in, it'll give you the position of the lats, the, the nail holes themselves. Uh, so the second lat then would be up here centered on the slate. Uh, so you can see that the lats being knelt, knelt on there. Um, yeah, sometimes they have a third. They have a triple thickness of slates down here, so they put on a third slate. Sometimes they put on slates sideways, and let's put a lat there to accommodate that slate. That's just illustrated right here. Um, so, um, yeah. So, next step, uh, yeah, you need to uh, at least, you know, from here on, then you put your nail on the last slat at the very point of the rafter up on top where it hits the fascia board or sorry the ridge board so um you'll see that illustrated here now we're going up there and here's your ridge board here so uh, you'll roll out your felt uh, uh, the required overlap yeah remember we, i i still call it felt but it's called membrane nowadays and here's the lash coming in here into position up close to the ridge board, right at the point of the rafter. So, um, usually then you'll measure the distance from the top of this lat, lat to the top of that lat. And um, you're going to take that figure, whatever it is, and divide it by the, um, usually by 250 millimeters for your typical situation, um, as stated here. Depends on what part of the country you're in. But, um, I'm just going to pick a, a typical scenario here, which is a 250 millimeter max, as is stated here, for the batten gauge. Uh, so you need to determine, you know, what is the for this particular roof. It's probably going to be a couple of mil less than that because you don't want to end up with the last one being the raw, uh, smaller, too small of a size. So for this exercise, um, we we will assume it's normal conditions. Uh, to get even gauge to the last one, you'll have to. Um, Take that figure and um, and divide it by two fifty, whatever your answer is. Round back up uh, to the next um, even or to the next sorry whole number. So if you end up with let's say twenty five point six rows, well, it really means it's going to be twenty six rows rather than you can't have twenty five point six. They all had to be the same size, and then you redivide that size we mentioned earlier. So um, and uh, just making the point here, they should snap chalk line. Uh, to keep the line, the slates in line, and um, off that horizontal chalk line, you need to have another chalk line going square off it. So as you're going up the roof with your um, uh, slates, you're watching that chalk line go as you're progressing up to the roof, because if you go past an opening like a velox opening for a velox roof light or a chimney, when you arrive the far side of the chimney or the far side of the um, roof op uh, opening, like we say, where you might have a velox. Uh, uh, roof light, you could find that your um, slates, when they meet each other on the far side of the chimney or, or uh, velox um, window, uh, the slates could be too close to each other. There should be anything between four to six mil apart, actually, side, the side of one slate to the slate uh, and the side of the next slate. So you could end up that the gap might be too big, or in fact, worse, you could have the slates touching each other or overlapping each other. So you'd have to bear that in mind as you're going up with each separate sets of slates either side of the chimney or either side of whatever opening you're going past. So that's the point that's been made here in this last slide. Okay.